Hey friendos, my name is Nez and welcome back for some more Monster Camp! Today we're back at it again for another secret ending. We do be having a lot of plot lines left to go though. There's still romancing Morty, Badness, all the other drink endings, and we haven't even finished the Genie Flask endings. Also, the gallery was recently put back into the game, but we're gonna leave that alone because it contains a lot of spoilers. Anyway though, let's play! One player, short game. Ah, Camp Spooky, the stage of some of our dearest summers. Back then we were young and unafraid. With school far away, everything seemed possible as the sun embraces on our way to camp. Summer has that distinct power, doesn't it? You live for the days while the nights inebriate you with possibilities. It's like a life could take a turn at every corner. And for us it did. Who are you? Let's play as Red, Amira. Let's conquer summer! One might say that the monster prom had harnessed us in the highs and lows of love. But no, in love we're always absolute beginners. And summer camp was no different. No one talked about it, but the idea of summer love loomed over our heads. Close to the last day of camp, there was a meter shower happening just three weeks away. Everyone knew that if you were into someone, you were going to watch that damn thing together. And so a silent yet powerful pressure invaded us. It was a monster prom all over again. Everything seemed uncertain, everything but one thing. Whoever we were going to ask on a meter shower date, it was probably going to be one of the six coolest people on that bus. Joy Johnson Jojima, a badass witch who wanted to chill a bit after saving the world countless times. Aravi Mishra, a hot-headed adventurer possessed by a curse who turned out to be the most annoying roommate ever. Gakulesa Hewitt Packard, a library computer who had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. Dolly Aquino, a buff blue demon and warmonger who had set her sights on conquering summer next. Damien LaVey, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and the love of fire. And Mila Belladonna, a death reaper doubling as an internet influencer who is profoundly in love with all of life and all of its earthly pleasures. The bus trip was long and all of summer could be shaped by the very first step well taken. And so it was clear, it came down to breaking the ice and causing a good impression with the right person. Time to break the ice, which book would you bring to a deserted island? Guide to speedrunning life, famous last words, a little very angry prince, interview with a very sexy vampire, my microwave manual, the art of war. Microwave manual. What a coincidence, Nez, my favorite book is also your microwave manual. You always buy the most interesting appliances. My other favorite book is your blender warranty agreement. I was just reading it now actually. Did you know that you can save up to 85% on repair costs if you buy the warranty within the first 30 days of purchase? Why don't we peruse it together on the way to camp? That we shall. We only have 3 weeks left though to war crushes and conquer their hearts. But as already said, we were young and afraid and we were ready to start. Back to camp spook, here we go friendos! Hopefully we could get Cal's genie flask secret ending or something else. Anyway, week 1 morning, where do we go? Let's go to... The Haunted Manor! While exploring the Haunted Manor, you find an enchanted skull who speaks in riddles. His voice makes your ears bleed! You decide to name him Sparky and put him on your keychain as a fun pet. He tells you all sorts of cool things, like Beware the tides of Venus, and if you meet a guy named Lenny at Costco, don't give him $20. Sparky also tells you exactly when and how you'll die. Apparently it's gonna involve a lot of mozzarella sticks. You also gain two bonus for gaining that foresight. A wall collapses and there's Dahlia with her fists out, Calculuser standing sheepishly next to her. Friend Dahlia, there was a door a mere 36 centimeters from the impact point of your punch. Dahlia! So we Aquinos make our own doors! I respect your rich family history of punching your way through walls. However, I feel it is my duty to inform you that utilizing pre-existing doors is 3.1 times more efficient than punching through walls and reducing knuckle wear and tear. Ah yes, this is why you're such a powerful ally, Cal. I never would have thought of using doors on my own. Hey, let's try this one over here! Dolly opens the door to her left and a deluge of screaming tongues pour out. Neither she nor Calculessor seem the least bit startled by this. Friend Dahlia, I had no idea you two were incapable of fear. Bonding experience initiated. What? No! I definitely experience fear! I'm just not afraid of a closet full of screaming tongues specifically! A healthy sense of fear is an important survival trait, and a necessary quality to a good leader! My fears include not being the best exploding in institutional racism! Ah, I see. I thought I had found someone else like me, but instead it seems I am both a poor facsimile of a living creature and a poor leader. Oh well. Chin up, my metal friend, it's gonna be okay! I have no chin, and no it is not. Yes it is, because Nez and I are gonna teach you how to feel fear so you can become a great leader you were born to be. I was also not born. 
so you can become the great leader you were made to be! Pretty sure Dahlia is not going to be able to accomplish this monumental task on her own. You're going to need to step in. Luckily, you know just how to scare Calculessor. We tell him the spooky story of Y2K. Or take him to the digital haunted house known as the Dark Web. Tell him the story of Y2K. Y2K? That was long before my time. I know little of it. I was only a little kid when it happened. I hardly remember it either. I was too busy conquering my preschool. Good. That means every terrifying detail of the story will be new to them. You tell them of a dark distant age, the 20th century, when pagers were still widely used. And some people thought frosted tips were a pretty good idea. Ah! I do not think that was the scary part of the story, Dahlia. Sorry, I'm also terrified of frosted tips. What happened next? A number of programmers in an attempt to save money in storage space encoded the year in various date-based applications as a two-digit num- a number of programmers, in an attempt to save money in storage space, encoded the year in various database applications as a two-digit number. Oh dear. What? Gosh. But a system like that would not be able to distinguish between the year 2000 and the year 1900. Exactly, you explained. When the clocks rolled over to January 1st, 2000, all sorts of important applications wouldn't know what year it was. Oh no! Knowing the year is important for all kinds of things, like keeping track of your age and remembering how long you've been holding a grudge! Also banking transactions, medical records, and air traffic control. How did programmers respond to this impending catastrophe? Some of them, you say, altered their programs to store the year as a four-digit number, solving the problem entirely. That is good. It seems this is not a scary story at all. But some, you continue, relishing the suspense, some found the solution too expensive. Especially on older machines where date storage was hard limited to six digits. <gasps> what did they do? What did they do? They started recording the day as a three-digit number from 1 to 365, and the year as a three-digit number that tallying how many years have passed since the 1900s. So the year 200 would be represented as 101? But, but, that solution will only be effective until the year 2899. People are so short-sighted, Nez, and people made me. Thank you, I am finally terrified. Not only have you succeeded in scaring Calculester, now you get to calm him and Dahlia down with snuggles and hot tea. So wholesome, you gain two charm and one fun. Well, that was very fun-educational. Even I forgot what Y2K was about. I was like four years old when that happened. Anyway though, week one evening. Where do we go? Let's go to Scout HQ. That day in Monster Scouts, you learn to make your very own clothes in the wild. Someone suggests a fashion show, so afterwards you all put on outfits and show them off. If you'd known that would be the result, you'd probably have made something other than a leaf stick thong and vine woven nipple tassels. Needless to say, nobody will be forgetting your performance anytime soon. You gain two creativity. You're sitting with Cal, helping him earn his small talk with flirtatious undertones badge when Coach sneaks up behind you wearing his bear costume. Oh no. Grr, bear attack! I'm a bear and I'm attacking you! <gasps> oh, hello friend Coach. Are you feeling okay? You seem to be growling quite loudly. I'm not coach, I'm a bear! Defend yourself against me! I'm gonna eat your flesh and crunch on your bones! Oh dear, oh dear. Coach, it appears oh coach is having another nom flashback. <laughs> nom flashback. My research indicates we should give him water and chewy candy to find him a quiet dark place to den until he comes back to reality. I'll go find an empty cave. What? No! The last thing you should be doing in a bear attack is busting out candy and going back to their cave! Haven't you kids ever heard of Stranger Danger? Oh, but you are not a stranger. You are my dear friend and mentor, Coach, whom I completely and uncritically trust with my life. But what if this was a real bear attack? You need to know how to defend yourself, Cal! Is this I don't understand, friend Coach. A real bear would likely not be interested in me, as I am made of metal and wires, and none of the tasty meat that you organics are comprised of. That would normally be a point of insecurity for me, but in this situation, I think it may be one of my better assets. Oh, you're still not out of the woods yet, champ! What if a bear didn't physically attack you, but instead cyber-attacked you? I highly doubt a bear would have the intellectual prowers to cyber- Error, error, error. cyber-attack imminent, poor function, shutting down, all settings changed, defenseless spray mode. You look over and realize the coach has actually gotten out a laptop and is cyber-attacking Cal! You beg him to stop! No, this is good for him! Now defend yourself, Cal! If a real hacker bear were doing this, he'd probably already cleared your memory caches! No, please! My childhood isn't there! Well, as usual, Coach has turned the harmless exercise into a life-or-death situation. You'd better help Cal out before he can no longer remember his parents' face, or screens, I guess. Well, uh, you must summon the hacker bear's natural predator, the hacktivist hyena. Or, cyber attacks can be repelled by firewalls, literal firewalls! 
Uh, let's go with... Cyber attacks can be repelled with firewalls. Yep, no need to continue thinking this plan over. You whip out the gasoline and matches and start lighting walls of fire around Coach. An anti-bear circle, if you will. Aww. Wait, what are you doing, Nez? I never have suspected you to be an arsonist. Well, we do hang out with Damien. <laughs> yeah, because being an arsonist is my lovable running gag. What are we torching, Nez? Ah, speak of the devil. You try to explain the situation to Damien, but it sounds more ridiculous the more you try to make it sound reasonable. Luckily, Damien has never needed a reasonable excuse to set shit on fire. Together, you light it on firewalls to open your own fire condo, complete with two fire bedrooms and one and a half fire baths. Coach is very worried. If you two don't stop it, you're going to burn the whole woods down! I don't understand what you're trying to accomplish! We're lighting firewalls! Doesn't that shit stop people from hacking all your porn or something? Sure, but you're not creating walls, you're just lighting fires in straight lines! Fire isn't solid and solidity is the single most important function of a wall! I know that, Smokey the Smartass! It's just a figure of speech! The firewall here is figurative! What, you didn't think I could commit arson and be metaphorical at the same time? I'm a man of nuance, dammit! This argument has the potential to go on for some time. Luckily, while Coach was distracted arguing linguistics with Damien, the fire spread to his laptop and burned it to ash. Coach is grudgingly impressed that you did technically manage to defeat the cyber bear, whatever. He leaves because now he needs to prepare a comprehensive course on the dangers of applying metaphors to fire. Ah, my access to my internal hard drive has been restored. I can finally feel my tactile senses returning. Thank you, Nez, for saving me. And thank you for not completely burning down the forest. There are many beautiful plants and innocent woodland creatures that live there. Though I do find it touching that you would risk their lives to save me from being slowly killed by my own virus protection software. Oh yeah, that's right. This all started because you were trying to save Cal. And you did! Somehow, you gained two bonus in one charm. That turned out okay. We didn't burn down anything and we saved Cal. Win-win, right? Anyway, week one night. Who do we hang out with? Let's go with Cal and Milo. Milo's doing their usual review of today's engagement with their Instagram post. Cal is peering at their phone interestedly. This should be good. <gasps> so you say that these likes are necessary to your health and well-being? Do they provide sustenance of some kind? Well, they sustain me spiritually in a way. The more likes I have, the better I feel and the better the world becomes. Ah, it is a biopsychological need then, to know and be known. I am comforted that once again logic has proven that everything can be boiled down to a science. I have read that other pack animals like Corvids experience a similar social drive phenomenon. Do Corvids have Instagram? Wait, no, Instagram isn't a science. Curating aesthetically pleasing selfies and pairing them with poetic phrases of inspirational genius is a very delicate art form that science could never hope to explain. That's why I'm an expert in my field, darling. It's hard to be a bard. But friend Milo, because if Instagram is a computer-based application, wouldn't it follow that it is rooted in science? Instagram isn't used on computers, darling. It's almost entirely exclusive to smartphones. Mm -hmm. Is that a microaggression? Smartphones are computers, too. They are merely young upstarts with smaller, sleeker appearances. I apologize, darling. You're right. I should be promoting technological body positivity. I'll post about it right now. My demographic would love it. Actually, after doing a quick algorithm scan of 1.2 billion Instagram accounts worldwide, I've scientifically concluded that the most fleek subject you could post is... Three iguanas in Birkenstock reading Eat, Pray, Love. I... what? No, your scientific method clearly doesn't work. Art, you see, is like an eggplant, it. You need to cut off Milo before DreamWorks copyright claims you or something. Can you end the debate on whether or not Instagram is a science or an art form? Ah, uh, well. Got Lester, there are lots of things science can't explain, like Instagram, nature of consciousness, and how I feel about Milo. Or Milo, you're saying no with your words, but yes with your IG profile. While we were talking, you just said and posted the iguana thing. True. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Friend Milo, even if you hide your phone from view, I can easily read your Instagram on my own interface and see that you posted the iguana picture with the caption hashtag lol so random. Ah, right, that. Well, you see, it's actually a funny story. A few years ago, I accidentally blinded a witch with my selfie camera flash, and she cursed me with forever popular hands. It forces me to post soon-to-be-popular stuff without even noticing, so that's probably what happened. Friend Milo, my sensors are detecting micro-expressions in your facial muscles that indicate you are telling an untruth. Ah, would you believe that the story was actually a metaphor for the nature of pop culture? One moment processing credibility request. No. Fine, you caught me. But just because this particular post was good for engagement doesn't mean the whole Instagram can be called a science. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I do not mean to delegitimize your art form. Just because math and science can be applied to art does not negate its creative value. On the other hand, my data can help you grow your following. If you'd like, I can analyze demographics to see which pictures would scientifically appeal to them most. You may proceed. You and Calculus are crunched in numbers and help Milo design posts about jewel paws that taste like strawberry white claw for their overlapping sorority girl fuckboy demographic. You also learn that millennials are responsive to images of snuffkins wearing a chicken suit and committing tax fraud. And infants with Instagrams are hot for baby shark analysis memes. Okay, you've got me. Maybe there is something to this whole science art collaboration. Maybe that's why they say STEM majors and art majors should be friends. It worked for the band Queen, why not for me? How inspiring. Happy. I'm happy that one of my innate abilities helped you, friend Milo. It is a joy to be the one teaching you something today. And you're just happy to help. Who knew science would get you that much closer to being laid? You should totally be paying more attention to AB Compsci. And now time for the drinks. We will use our skills. Against your better judgment, you decide to visit one that weekend. I just prepared a bunch of drinks. I have no idea what they do. They can make you immortal or turn your blood into mayonnaise. You know, wizard in training. Drink at your own risk. But if you've made up your mind, get ready. Time to start. What do we have? Oh... The Molotov Cocktail! Let's go grab that! Get out of our way, you assholes! We will grab the Molotov, whether you like it or not! Stay away! Stay away! I said stay away! Stay away! Ah, fuck off! Okay, re-rolling! What do we have this time? Oh! Hello, hello! Do I spot a certain drink involving a very hypersexualized bowl? Now we just have to claim it before these other assholes push us away. There we go. I guess we're doing this one. The best. Ah, the best. It's actually a bit of a misnomer. It's not actually the best drink. It's just a minotaur milk with a spell on it. It will draw you closer to minotaurs. It'll give you gas if you're lactose intolerant. Shut, shut, shut. Still hard to believe you drank that. Good luck, I guess. It'll bring us close to Minotaurs, you say? Huh! Showtime. Okay, week two, morning. Where do we bait out this Minotaur? Let's go to the Camp Dome. Another day at the Camp Dome, another day trying to survive a deadly battle royale game. You managed to murder 10 people in 20 minutes, what a feat! The audience roars, this will certainly give you a lot of boldness. But wait, the Camp Dome shouldn't make you gain boldness, but charm! Even if it doesn't make sense, you want charm! You think quickly and make a fancy hat out of the guts of a corpse. The audience is wowed and grants you two charm. Much better! Later, you're conducting your weekly intelligence raid over at Camp Arrival Camp, which involves you hiding in bushes and spying on Dimitri and Morty while they oil wrestle each other shirtless. Oof, you bit me again, Morty. God, you're a beast of a man. While I'm down here, I have news for you. I recently reconnected with my birth sire, Liam. Whoa, seriously? You mean the guy who originally turned you into a vampire? That's huge! I'm happy for you, bro! Indeed, after several attempts by Nez to rekindle our flame, Liam and I were able to conduct a marathon all-night father-son bonding session. I must tell you, my dear bovine BFF, it made me so happy. I have never felt so seen, so respected by my sire, so fully developed as a complex character. Damn, that sounds hot! I gotta be honest, I'm jealous of you! And I'm almost never jealous of people! Because of my glutes and ab definition, you know! Oh, that. Morty, I'm sure someday you'll get an experience such as a life-changing event yourself! Now please release me, I've got a brooding date with Liam's schedule! Yeah, maybe someday! Can't wait to watch you walk away, bro! And Dimitri leaves. You watch Morty slowly strip naked and enter a nearby river, gently soaking his wrestling towel and letting the water run over his muscular shoulders. Oh, I've got so many emotions right now, not even slutty bath is helping. I just feel like nobody ever sees past my body. And I get it, I'm basically built to fuck. But sometimes I feel like no one cares about the real me. I'm just eye candy, a big juicy piece of hot bull meat hanging on the window of a sexy butcher shop. People always say that all minotaurs get to make a special wish to the river. Listen up, river, I wish that I could get a cool narrative arc just like Dimitri. Oh shit, now you feel a little guilty about all the times you've shamelessly objectified Morty. You are technically watching him from the bushes right now, you decide to help. Oh hey, Nez, glad you decided to come out of the bushes. I knew you were there, by the way, it's cool, I like to have an audience. 
Wait, are you saying you want to help me develop a complex character? That's amazing! Like, no gag reflex level of amazing! Think about it, for some reason, you're literally always around when people are becoming more fleshed out and growing as characters! My river wish is coming true! Now let's start brainstorming. Based on what Dimitri said, you can get a narrative arc by discerning that you're secretly related to someone you know! Yeah, It'll be I'm easy, good. we'll just find someone I know and then we'll make them related to me. Yeah, that'll definitely give me some depth! You don't know how to make someone related to you, but you're not going to burst this buff bull's bubble. Who's the perfect person to be secretly related to Morty? Uh, well... There's an old scary witch in the woods with big grandma energy. She could be your grandmother, it's technically possible. Or Scott is obviously your long-lost brother. He always calls you bro and there's no other logical explanation for that. Ooh, do you mean Baba Yaga? A grandma witch? Ooh, is she a certified gilf? Please no. You tell Morty the truth? The Baba Yaga is less of a sexy mysterious witch and more of a terrifying child-eating witch. Oh, thank god, I was just worried she would be too sexy. I gotta be related to this lady, remember? Alright, let's go get me a grandma Nez. You and Morty find the Baba Yaga's very creepy house, and she immediately runs down her front steps to yell at you. Ah, filthy children, get out of my forest and get off my lawn! You have the stink of a child all over you! Listen up, witch lady! You're my new grandmother and you can't do shit about it! What's that muscular child saying? Why, now that I take a closer look, I see that this muscular child has two horns! And it says I'm its grandmother! How odd! I suppose this child beast could be my grandchild. I may have impregnated a few demons back in the 60s. Ah, those were the days. <laughs> Let me make some calls. Wait, seriously? You could be my real grandma? Nez, you're amazing! Like a lucky rabbit's foot that I want to fuck somehow! The Baba Yaga spends two hours calling all of her ex-demon lovers and asks any of them if they birth a demon child. Sadly, they all say no. I'm sorry, strange behorn child. It seems that you are not my spawn. But I have taken a liking to you due to your hideousness. Perhaps we could stay in touch. And so Morty and the Baba Yaga agree to be pen pals. It's weirdly adorable. Afterwards, Morty pulls you aside. Thanks for helping me, Nez! At first I was sad that the witch lady wasn't my real grandma, but then I thought about you and I felt a little warm inside. It feels like you're giving my heart an erotic massage! I've decided to show my appreciation by doing 200 shirtless push-ups for you! The sight of Morty's push-ups is so beautiful that it adds 10 years to your lifespan, flushes your body of all of its toxins, and gives you three charm! Well, that was wholesome! I'm glad we found this Minotaur guilt. That's probably the first time that sentence has been spoken in all of human history. Anyway, week two evening, where do we go? Let's go to the Camp Dome again! While you're in the throes of a battle at the Camp Dome, one of your teammates suddenly gets shot by three swift arrows. While slowly dying, he asks you to take two charm he had hanging around his neck in a silver locket. It's a family heirloom, he wants you to take it to his father and tell him his son died in battle. While crying, you promise to do so, you'll honor his death. Thing is, later you end up binge watching 15 episodes of Garfield back to back, and you totally forget about your promise. Oopsies. You take a break from tomfoolery to spend a few quiet moments with Calculus romantically perusing some spreadsheets. And this friend Nez is an index of every plant I have cared for during my short lifetime. Look, here is Buckaroo Bonsai. There is Robert Pattinson, and here is the entry for Jennifer and Lawrence. Oh, oh dear. According to my spreadsheet, I have severely neglected poor Jennifer. Her feeding, watering, and sunlight are all within acceptable range, but look here. Got letter directs you to a column called Emotional Development. 13.5. Statistically, that is the most immature number. I must find the time to take her into the woods to be mentored by an older, wiser plant. Perhaps Dutch Elm. <laughs> Better make that trip soon, naive summer camper, because the woods won't be here for much longer. <laughs> Indeed, all organic life is fleeting, but I do not think it calls for laughter. But if I didn't laugh, how would you know I was an evil CEO? Hmm, huh. perhaps I should introduce myself. Mr. Pappas is the name, and turning beloved summer camps into shopping malls is my game. A game which I intend to play here at Camp Spooky by buying it and turning it into a shopping mall. I do not understand. What leads you to believe that this is a good location for a shopping mall? What are your site selection criteria? Oh, That's easy. When deciding mall. where to build a shopping mall, I always consider three things. Acreage, local infrastructure, and how many hundreds of youths it will upset. 
As the saying goes, you can't build a shopping mall without upsetting a few youths. But I didn't get to where I am today by settling for just a few. That's pretty ironic because here in the Philippines, shopping malls are basically a place where anybody young goes to nowadays. Oh dear. Oh dear. According to the specified criteria, Camp Spooky is indeed the ideal location for a shopping mall. I do not support the wholesale destruction of this camp and its environs, but I feel compelled to bow to superior logic. What can I do? Oh no, Camp Spooky is replaced with a shopping mall. Where are you gonna mac? The food court? Gross! There's only one way out. You gotta suggest a shopping mall location that would upset more youths than building it here. Ah uh, well, according to all of pop culture, the best place to build a shopping mall is in the 1980s. Yeah! Or kids hate it when you take away their video games. Build a shopping mall in Fortnite. The 1980s, then! The 1980s? Interesting! That's just a sort of outside the space time continuum thinking we need in this business! Patrick, run the numbers on building a shopping mall in the 80s! No, don't tell me that's impossible! I own the trademark on impossible! Huh, the numbers bear out your suggestion, Nez. Looks like we'll be starting our construction in negative 40 years! But friend Mr. Pappas, is time travel feasible? I seem to recall it violating the principles of causality and conservation of energy. Anything is feasible if you're rich enough! The government started selling temporal offsets years ago! I'll just buy a few and head back to the 1980s! <laughs> Before you can say anything, Pappas and his intern, Patrick, have vanished in Puff of Commerce. You've successfully removed him, not only from here, but from now. You appear to have saved camp, friend Nez. And yet an important question remains. Will setting loose an exploitative CEO several decades in the past have any delicious effects on the timeline? Oh, you assure Cal that any damage Papas might do in the past has already been done. That's why we live in a soft dystopic oligarchy where the super rich sacrifice the health and livelihood of workers for short-term gain. Oh, that's a relief. It sure is. And now Papas is gone, you're free to go about your usual daily routine of worrying about climate change when... I'm back! Boy, time travel sure is invigorating! I went back to the 80s, but it turns out building a shopping mall and the remains of my parents' demolished high school made it unlikely that I would be ever born. In the process of convincing them to have sex after all, I invented a popular dance move that made me millions and realized the immense money-making potential of time travel. Like now you'll excuse me, I'm off to build shopping malls over the high schools of all my business rivals. I'm going to be so wealthy! <laughs> Ah, perhaps we have finally discovered the reason for the current education crisis. That's a load off my processors. Yeah, who needs high schools? It's just as easy to get laid at summer camp anyway. You gain two charm and one boldness. I hope we then end up messing with the timeline and destroying monster problem in the process. Week 2, night. Who do we sit with? Let's go with Mossman. Good evening, Nez. Are you here to engage in idle chit chat with me? How is your health? The weather has been temperature. I heard that politics have been mediocre lately and have many complex opinions. Great, now that small talk is out of the way, can we get to the part where we exchange hot, steamy, world-rocking gossip? Well, damn, Moss Man didn't need to make it sound like the intro to a porno, but sure, you're always down for a gossip quickie by the campfire. Choose one. Edible underwear, night vision goggles, magical girl cosplay, flaming AK-47. Edible underwear. Biggest Dick Energy Award, Hentai Addiction, Chronic Earwax Buildup, Immaculate Chakra Alignment, The Biggest Dick Energy Award, and type in a famous person who's hella dead. Let's go with Freddie Mercury. What delightful sweet, gossipness, sweet you never gossip. disappoint with your incredible rumors. Anyway, we should do this again sometime. Something something, stay in touch, I'm no longer interested in this conversation and don't have a good excuse to leave, goodbye. The cell reception out here is total ass, so everyone's bored enough to spread your rumor around fairly quickly. Hey, have you heard the news about Nez? No? Well then, get ready to have your shit rot. Last night when Nez was in line at Starbucks, he just so happened to see the famous celebrity Freddie Mercury waiting for their drink nearby. Being the giant fan that he is, Nez immediately went and said hello. Apparently Freddie Mercury was impressed with Nez's outfit, especially his edible underwear. Then Nez asked Freddie about the rumors surrounding their biggest dick energy award. Freddy was very flattered by that and they immediately followed Nez on Twitter. Nez's life has never been the same since. Isn't it wild? I would remember that the next time you talk to him. Nez may not have gotten to actually meet Freddie Mercury, but everyone who meets Nez after hearing this is gonna know that he gained four charm. And now back to the drinks. Do we use our skills? Do we gamble? We gamble! Weekend arrives and so it's time to visit one the small magical Latino cat. Look who's here, welcome to my bar. Really, I don't know who in their right mind would take such a risk. I guess you have more thirst than common sense. 
Anyway, check this drink out. We have a love potion. No idea if I got the recipe right, wanna try it. Otherwise, you always have the mystery box. Uh, we'll go with the love potion. It's a safe bet. Yeah, no totally, I was testing your common sense. And you passed, your prize is the drink you chose. The love potion. Ah, the love potion number nine. The right way to get someone to like you more is by being yourself and finding someone with whom you can match. But the fast way is by drinking this drink. And this is the part where I leave before you puke all over me, ciao! Bye, Juan! Okay, week three morning, friendos! Where do we hang out? I say we go to. We have a lot of charm. Wow, okay. Let's just keep going to the camp dome! That day, play competitive spin the bottle. You must kiss a camper from Camp Arrival Camp. It's a long, intense kiss in which your tongues wrestle mercilessly. You apply some unexpected biting, since that's currently very high in the meta, while holding the back of their head to prevent an untimely escape. You win at kissing, it goes without saying, you burn two charm. Afterwards, Morty insists that you help him on a quest to get his own narrative arc. He's working on becoming a complex character. By having you spray him down with cold, cold hose water. Come on, drench me, Harder Nez! My shorts get totally see-through when they're soaked. That's gotta make me more profound, right? You're trying not to shamelessly ogle this buff minotaur when suddenly Batness hops out of the nearby bushes. Why are people always hiding in bushes in this game? Defeat Freeze, evil. oppressor scum! The tide of change has freed the people from your tyrannical... Oh, Morty, Nez! Yeah. Sorry, I mistook you two for the Chancellor's secret police force. We're rounding up the last of them for the guillotine. Not sure if you heard, but I recently led a people's rebellion and unseated the corrupt evil Chancellor. We've all been liberated from the dystopia. You're welcome! Damn, I have been feeling a bit more liberated lately, but I've thought that was because I stopped wearing underwear. That's awesome madness. It is awesome. Through the power of justice, I formed a coalition of allies and made the Chancellor pay the price for his atrocities, all while juggling several love triangles. Trust me, but in I'm the end, I was the only one who could truly defeat the Chancellor, and I did so in a super heroic way that no one can prove didn't happen. That's why I'm the protagonist. Nice! I'm happy for you, and now that I think about it, you do have main character energy. Wait, madness! Maybe you can help us out non-sexually. Lately, I've been really tired of everyone objectifying me all the time! I want people to sexually objectify my body and respect me as a complex character! Nez and I have been going at it hard for hours, but I don't feel any more complicated yet. You gotta tell me how to become a full-fleshed-out protagonist! Oh, sweet Morty, of course I'll help you. Helping lowly side characters with their problems is a crucial duty of a protagonist. I see that you've already recruited Nez to witness your narrative development. That's a great start to protagonisting. But to be a true hero, you need to go on an exciting adventure. Something that pushes you beyond all of your limits and appeals to all the young adult demographic. I like the sound of that! I want to go through a huge, turgid, sweaty character arc. Something that'll turn me from half bull, half man to whole bull, whole man. Now we gotta think of an adventure I could go on. Like, um, does an 18 hour orgy count as a heroic adventure? Absolutely not! Morty, how could you say that word in front of me? I insist that all my interpersonal relations be rated PG 13! Luckily for Morty and his inhumanely large biceps, you've got the perf idea for a sweet, sweet character-developing adventure. Uh, well, what if Morty rises up as the leader of a revolution? He'll unseat the evil, uh, magistrate. He's an evil dictator who's trying to ban the fundamental right to be sexy. Or Morty will find his lost wallet within the twisty, turny walls of a mythical labyrinth. It's a Greek or Roman classic, baby. Ah, yes, of course, we must fight the ban on being sexy. Huh? I've never heard of this magistrate dude, but he's already pissing me off! Sexiness is a basic right! Just like the right to bear arms! As in the right to have buff, sexy, bear-like arms! Fuck the magistrate! Uh, I'm not so sure, Nez. I've never even seen or heard of the magistrate. Are you sure this isn't some kind of dystopian-themed delusion you've invented? Are you sure you're not just projecting badness? You assure Batness that the Magistrate is very real and very evil. After all, you would never lie to trick someone who's dating you. Batness has an appointment with a guillotine sharpener, so she leaves you and Morty together to defeat the Magistrate. You tell Morty of the Magistrate's unending corruption. 
I hate the fucking magistrate! How dare he outlaw the use of stripper poles! What kind of monster decrees the tying of a cherry stem with your tongue as a crime? I swear, someday I'll find this magistrate bro and I'm going to ram him! And then I'm going to cover him with lube and impale him on my horns. <laughs> Mwahaha, it is I, Polly, I mean the Chancellor. I mean the Magistrate. Oh look, it's two idiots in a trench coat. Morty the Minotaur, you've broken the <laughs> sexiness laws. Uh-oh! It's you! Listen up, Magistrate, I'm going to topple you from power and make sex cool again! The revolution is coming, you piece of shit head of the state! Actually, we've decided to surrender! You win! Haha! -ha. What? Did I seriously defeat you that quickly? Fuck, I thought this was going to be a long, juicy adventure! Come on, Magistrate, don't be like that! Suddenly, the Magistrate splits apart in two! Polly and Scott! Huh, this seems familiar! Prank! Prank? Gotcha, bro! Me and Polly were doing a prank on you! But we got kinda bored in the middle of it, so we took off our disguise! Prank? Yep, we thought it would be hilarious to dress up as a Magistrate! But it turns out disguises are only funny the first eight times! Then it gets kinda stale! Polly has a point. This game has robots disguised as students, cops disguised as students, a coach disguised as a bear, a camp counselor disguised as a lamb, and students disguised as robots. And all of that is obviously hilarious, but a werewolf and a ghost disguised as an evil magistrate is one too many. This is where I, the narrator, draw the line. Bye. Don't stress too hard, Bull Boy. I'm sure you'll get that juicy narrative arc someday. Just remember, you done been pranked. <laughs> Maybe she's right. I'm gonna keep looking for my character growth, and you're staying right by my side till I find it, Nez! Yay! Your belated deception worked perfectly. Morty's feeling optimistic about his character growth, and you're feeling more bold than ever. Plus three boldness, more bold to be exact. How will we get Morty more character growth, friendos? He needs some sort of juicy adventure or something. Week three evening, where do we go? Let's go to the Camp Dome. That day at the Camp Dome, you all do thumb wars. That means the campers are waging war against the Thumb Warriors, the supernaturally buffed Thumb Monsters from Camp Thumb. It's surprisingly terrifying. You all were sure to lose, but thanks to your quick thinking, you had to plan to fight the Thumb Warriors with the greatest weakness, predators without opposable thumbs. Some may say that your team sticking a pack of rabid mountain lions with the competitors is cheating, but you prefer the term strategic, you gain two charm. For once, you've decided to spend the whole day minding your own damn business, you're going to take a nap. When suddenly, someone pins you against a nearby wall, you're surrounded by two large, muscular, sexy arms that are covered in body oil. It's a wall slam, baby! Cap it on! Hey, Nez, did you miss me? I've been looking for you because I got a new idea for becoming a more complex character! Hear me out. It starts with me getting in a kiddie pool filled with jello. Whoop whoop! Emergency alert! Ravi, Nez is getting attacked by some kind of weird hot cow! Get him! Get your hooves off of him, you fiend! Get ready for my dagger of girthful stabbing! Here comes the death blow, you! Wait, Hex, that's Morty. Mm. God damn it, Hex, were you trying to trick me to stabbing someone again? I told you stabbing is only funny if it's consensual! You got that right! Don't worry, I'm not going to attack Nez, I need him! Cause I'm on a mission to become a more three-dimensional minotaur! Hot, am I right? Oh, good for you, dude. I've been there. Growing as a person can be kind of tough, but it's worth it in the end, trust me. Psh, how would you know, Aravi? You get tons of screen time. Emotionally, I mean. You know that super common phrase everyone always says all the time, emotional screen time? Or we can just get Lol, some that's not even a thing. Hey, you guys are both wrong anyway. Being an underdeveloped character is where it's at. You ain't gotta do shit. Uh don't listen to them, Morty. My character used to be way smaller. I had a pretty one-dimensional personality during high school. Fuck, I didn't even have a sidekick back then. Wait, seriously? Ravi, that's incredible! You gotta tell me how you did all that character growth! I can offer six to eight sexual favors in return! I'm good, thanks. It's kind of embarrassing, but I had to work on my anger issues. There was a time when all I wanted to do was literally murder every single monster I saw. It was my fatal flaw, but I did some therapy, and eventually I was able to come to terms with my f my f Oh, Robbie tried to say the word feelings. You can do it, girl. Show them that emotional maturity. Okay, so I need to figure out my fatal flaw and overcome it, but I'm so flawless. This is impossible. Ah. Feelings! Yes, I did it. Uh. And Morty, everyone's got flaws, especially Hex, who is basically made of flaws. Huh. I'm not sure what my fatal flaw is, but after all this time together, Nez knows me better than anyone else. Nez. 
definitely not true, but you'll give it a shot. Everyone knows that Morty's fatal flaw is... Ah... Uh, his unforgivable habit of opening new yogurts instead of finishing the ones he left in the fridge. It's the big flaw we all knew about but weren't ready to address. Or being too fucking hot. He's way too hot! Nez, that's the smartest thing you've ever said! I am way too hot! It's my curse, my oh-so-fatal flaw! No, no, being hot is not a curse and definitely not a flaw. Wait, do you guys even know what a flaw means? You're wrong, Aravi! Try walking in my shoes for once and you'll see that being this hot isn't all fun and games and bagging MILFs! First off, I get audited every single year because the IRS lady wants an excuse to strip search my house and steal my underwear! And I can't get 200 feet of a car wash. If I do, my instincts will kick in and I'll start washing people's cars with my dummy thick ass cheeks! Don't even get me started on the chafing! But the worst part of being this sexy is that nobody ever listens to you! They're all too distracted by my horn girth and my... You wanna listen to Morty, but his red sash just slipped down an inch. It's a modified nip slip and your brain nearly explodes from arousal! Damn, I never realized the suffering your hotness is cause! I guess it do be like that sometimes, you know? This is impossible. But Morty, even if being too hot is a flaw, it's not a flaw you can do anything about! You can't just go through an I'm too hot redemption arc! Oh, I think I get it now! You're saying that there's no way to fix being too hot, so I should just accept it! No, that's not at all what I was trying to say! Yes. I'll just accept the cold, harsh truth that I have the perfect body, enough stamina to last 18 rounds in a row when a dick sculpted by horny angels. This is my cross I have to bear forever. I'm like a sexier, even more shirtless version of Jesus. I'll have to find some other way to develop my character, but in the meantime, does anyone want to watch me slowly eat some oysters? Yeah, I'd watch that. I'm fine if you insist. Morty's happy, the memory of his oyster-eating technique will enchant your dreams forever. You gain three charm, you perv. And that did it. Okay. Well, at least Morty's happy that he finally gets to accept how hot he truly is. Let's ask him to the meteor shower. Let's do this. You ask no one to the meteor shower because you'd prefer to check on your favorite buff sexy minotaur. Yes! So I've been doing some thought flexing and talking to my muscles. I think I failed at finding character growth, but maybe I was finding it by searching for it! Listen, what if pursuing some character growth was my character growth? Ah, yes, of course. I evolved from being hypersexualized eye candy for my life's audience, and being this sexy will forever be my cross bearer! Because I started having these concerns, I wanted to be more than that! That has been my first level of depth! Yes! Yes! I can feel it, Nez! My character is growing right now! Can you feel it? Can you feel my strong, palpable character growth? All of its greatness, all of its character girth! Ah, oh, it feels so good! Character grunt! Okay, this is weird, but at least Morty seems happy. Wanna go with me to watch that meteor shower? I'd love for you to make my character grow again, you rock at that! Sure, why not? You go to the meteor shower with Morty. It's actually quite cool. Yeah, he's a total himbo, but hey, you're kinda into that. You have a meaningful conversation about your concerns, fears, and dreams. It's such a deep convo that it makes his character grow a lot. It's quite impressive. He even lets you hold his now very big character in your two hands. Oh, oh my. Seeing such a big character makes you proud and a bit horny. It is a very nice night. You realize sometimes it's sexier to have a meaningful conversation rather than just having sex. There's an innate hotness to beholding someone's beautiful character. Hey, there we go, friendos. It may not be the depth we wanted, but at least Morty got a bit of it. Like, a whole cake slice worth. And before we knew it, those weeks were gone. It felt like a hot minute, and it felt like an entire lifetime. That night, as we saw summer coming to an end, we all wondered what would come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older and I can see it, how those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned tragedies, sung for centuries, wild nights became epics treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a consolation we'll always find while gazing into that sorry night, no matter how many years go by. Even today, I can still close my eyes and I'm there. On that last summer night. Feeling like I was just starting to live life. 
with all my friends around that campfire. So young and unafraid. And so ready to start. And there we go, friendos, Morty's secret ending. We finally got the sexy hot hip mobile to date us. If you friendos enjoyed that Corona Monster Cap, leave your comments down below, like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to always stay up to date with our videos. Until our next episode, my name is Nez, and thanks for watching. See you all next time. Bye, friendos!